Resident Evil 1 was the game that started it all, and ever since its release it has received nothing but positive reviews. The game was released back in 1996, and to this day many fans are eager to learn more secrets and hidden details that the game has to offer. With that being said, here's 30 things you still don't know about Resident Evil 1. Number 1. Resident Evil was originally designed as a first-person game. It wasn't until Shinji Mikami discovered a game called Alone in the Dark that he decided to alter the camera from first-person to a fixed third-person perspective. Alone in the Dark's camera system was revolutionary and highly influential in the development of subsequent horror games, and it inspired Mikami to drastically alter an already well-in-progress game. Mikami has since stated that Alone in the Dark was arguably the most important influence on the design of the game. Number 2. Early on in the development of the remake, a large laser gun was showcased in the game's prototype, specifically as a test for some of the game's effects. Despite it not likely ever having a place in the game itself, the idea that it could have been an unlockable or secret weapon is not all far-fetched. Number 3. The remake of Resident Evil was originally going to be a carbon copy of the original, with a few additions besides updated graphics and gameplay. As time went on, the game was tweaked and developers added new areas, plot lines, and puzzles. These changes ultimately deviated from the original script and story. Number 4. So usually in a Resident Evil game, we see Japanese censored versions, but this time, it's the opposite. The international version had some censored material that was much different from the Japanese version. The FMV played when encountering the first zombie had a shot of Kenneth Sullivan's decapitated and torn apart head dropping to the floor in the Japanese version. Also when a hunter enemy sliced you, Chris or Jill's head would get decapitated. Number 5. Resident Evil technically has no endgame canon ending. Depending on the certain choices that are made during the game, 12 different endings can be unlocked, but none of these lead into the continuity established by the later games in the series. It is generally believed that the unseen canon ending is a hybrid of Chris's and Jill's scenarios with their respective best possible endings. Number 6. In the room with the ceiling trap, there is what looks to be an uncolored umbrella logo in the center of the floor. Number 7. Resident Evil originally didn't have door loading screens as the GameCube was powerful enough to not need them. However, fans disliked this decision so Capcom put them back in. Number 8. In the cemetery directly behind the mansion, all the tombstones have an ancient Greek text on them. One word that is on every stone translate to Chapchom in English, which is a reference to Capcom, the game's developer. Number 9. The original GameCube version of the game had a glitch where the player could endlessly multiply ammunition for Jill's grenade launcher using specific manipulation of the item box. If the player so chooses, moving items around in a particular order can grant Jill practically infinite ammo for the grenade launcher. This of course breaks the balance of the game entirely, so it was removed in newer versions of the game. Number 10. There's an easter egg with a computer lab in which you must enter the passwords. When trying to unlock the B2F door, if you enter the word mole, the correct password that was used in the original Resident Evil game, you will hear Tofu speaking. This will not unlock the B2F door though. Number 11. There is a hidden Mega Man drawing in the files of the Biohazard Trial version. It shares its file with an image of Chris Redfield's skin. Number 12. So for those of you who haven't played the Sega Saturn port, this port has a fair amount of cool extras. One of the best was you being able to fight a zombie version of Wesker on the Unlockable Battle game. Also, an extra tough gold version of Resident Evil's final boss, the Tyrant, can also be found in this minigame. Number 13. A trial version of Resident Evil included messages written in blood on the walls, presumably to flesh out the backstory of the mansion's zombified residents. One of these reads, painful breathing, someone stop this suffering. One of the other messages was going to say, for God's sake, get out. Number 14. The game originally had plans to be ported over to the Game Boy. This port was 90% complete when it was finally scrapped with Capcom stating they were not confident that the product would have made both consumers and Capcom happy. Number 15. So on the cover of the game, a lot of fans speculate that this character is Chris, but in reality, the man is not any particular character and is simply a composite figure for the game's creepy concept. Number 16. The game was originally going to include a co-op mode and the characters would not be separated. This mechanic was later scrapped as the producer thought it wasn't good enough and would take away from the overall survival horror experience. 
Number 17, so you can actually run slightly faster if Jill or Chris carry a knife or no weapon. Number 18, out of the original monsters from the original version, the giant spiders are the only enemy to have a different name. They were called web spinners in the original and are now called tarantulas in the remake. Number 19, back in the day development teams were incredibly small, so small in fact that Shinji Mikami worked alone for the first 6 months of the game's development. Shinji Mikami tirelessly worked on the concept sketches, designing the iconic characters and their motivations, and writing the first 40 pages of the game's script. In short, Resident Evil is basically the brainchild of a single person, and that single person is none other than Shinji Mikami. Number 20. The ending of Resident Evil 1 was quite different from the ending of Biohazard, the Japanese version of the game. It had different music and different cutscenes. If you are interested in viewing these differences in full, I will be sure to leave a link in the description for both endings. Number 21. The wasps in the game can't hurt you when you're running. Number 22. There is a small room on the first floor of the mansion you can access from using the main hall using the helmet key. Inside you will find a zombie, some herbs, and a box containing the emblem key. If you kill the zombie, go back to the main hall, and then come back to the room, a hidden cutscene will occur where a hunter will smash the door. Number 23. If the player succeeds in beating Invisible Mode within 5 hours, they will unlock the following message from Resident Evil director Shinji Mikami. Thank you for taking your time to play all the way through Resident Evil. If you're reading this, I salute you. You are truly a remarkable player. I imagine you must have had some pretty memorable experiences along the way. The pain of seeing the game over screen in time after time, the sweet taste of victory after you finally beat the game, the feelings of camaraderie you shared with your character, the excitement, and the overwhelming sense of dread. We believe that the games are more than just a product of a team of developers. It takes the support of dedicated players like you to make the game worthwhile. For this reason, we are truly delighted when someone enjoys one of our games as thoroughly as you have. Therefore, on behalf of the entire staff, please allow me to express our gratitude and congratulate you on a job well done. Thank you very much for playing. Number 24. If you play as Jill Valentine, there are a couple of hidden cutscenes at the very beginning of the game. Immediately go back to the main hall to trigger a cutscene with Wesker. That gunfire. I'm counting on you to investigate, Jill. Sure thing, Wesker. Attempting to leave the dining room a second time will show Barry mocking Jill. Got cold feet already? That's not like you. And finally, after you talked with Barry in front of the fireplace, pass the door without opening it and a zombie will come into the dining room. Who is it? You! Freeze! Get away from him, Jill! He's insane! Number 25. When activating power to the elevator in the mansion basement, walk upstairs through the kitchens rather than use the elevator. When you run down the hallway to Kenneth's body in the dining room, a red-colored hunter alpha will burst through from another corridor. If this enemy is encountered, the loading zone will consist of both corridors for the rest of the game. Number 26. Crows will never attack the players if they walk. In some areas, such as the gallery or the small staircase near Kenneth's body, the crows will tolerate running, but will attack if the players shoot at them. Number 27. So you can actually find out who the traitor was early on. Wesker's gun model makes a unique sound when fired, like no other star's members. It is hearable during the intro of the game when he shoots at the infected dogs, and in the residence when he shoots at the bees right before crossing paths with Jill or Chris. Number 28. The developers of the Resident Evil remake had some devious ideas to make the game more difficult, with one of the more notable ones being to make all the game's enemies invisible. While that certainly would have made the game more difficult, the team ultimately scrapped the idea since it would have changed too much of the gameplay from the original. They did include the invisible enemy mode as an unlockable difficulty for players who really wish to challenge themselves. Number 29. Resident Evil is one of the most iconic franchises in gaming history, yet Capcom did not have faith in the original game. The director of Sweet Home admitted that Resident Evil was a niche game and wasn't likely to breach the mainstream. In fact, he thought that the game would only sell 200,000 copies, and both Mikami and Capcom agreed, not believing that a horror game would be successful. Well, they were definitely wrong because the game later went on to sell nearly 3 million copies. 
Number 30. The title for the game was originally going to be much different. The original Japanese name Biohazard was not available for the trademark in the United States due to previous claims to the name, so a new title was necessary. Capcom ran a company contest to come up with a new name, leading to the title of Resident Evil Tag. This name was chosen for its relation to the mansion setting.